Hey, I'm Lady Becky. And I'm Lady Ada. And we're really excited about the new Tron movie, so today we're going to show you how to turn an old laptop bag into a Tron bag using EL wire. Awesome. Let's go to the desk and look at what we need to get started. Fantastic. Here we are at the desk with all the tools we think you'll need to do this project. First off, you'll need a soldering iron. Any kind of soldering iron will do. And some electronic solder. You can get this at a hardware store. You'll also want some EL wire, of course, in whatever length. We like the Aqua 2.3 or 2.6 millimeter, which will look the most Tron-like. And wherever you get your EL wire, you'll also get an inverter and some matching connectors to connect the EL wire. From your sewing supply shop, get some invisible thread and a needle to attach the EL wire. You'll also want some scissors, of course, to cut the thread. Um, to attach the EL wire to the inverter, you'll want a couple accessories like heat shrink to protect it, some ribbon cable which you can use to extend the wire, and some copper tape which you can get actually at any um, stained glass store and this will also protect the EL wire. You'll want a lighter or hair dryer to heat the heat shrink up. And then some wire tools like wire cutters and wire strippers available at any hardware store. We also suggest getting a third hand tool which will make it a lot easier to attach the wire to the EL wire. First, trace out your design using chalk on your laptop bag. The Tron movies use lots of interrupted straight lines with 45 degree angles. Next, measure out your design using a tape measure. You want to make sure that the total amount of EL wire doesn't exceed the inverter's maximum. In this case, about two and a half meters. Then you can cut the strands to match your design. We're using four strands. Make sure to leave about two inches at each end to leave room for making the connector in the next step. You can use a small piece of heat shrink tubing to black out sections of the EL wire. This is a really easy way to make interrupted lines in your design. The first step is to take off the protective PVC sheath on the wire. Using the wire strippers, strip off the plastic about one centimeter from the end. Once you've stripped off the plastic, you'll notice that there's actually more than one wire on the inside. There's the thick inner core, and then there's these fine wires. There's actually two wires that are supposed to come out of here, but I accidentally cut one of them. This is pretty common. If this happens, you have to start over, which is why we always suggest giving two or three extra inches of space on the end. All right, this time I'm not going to squeeze as hard, so hopefully I won't cut both wires. So now I have both of the little wires. Now we're going to solder to these fine wires. Uh, to make it easier, I'm going to put it in the third hand tool. It means I can work on it while this holds it steady. We're going to use some copper tape and wrap it around and then solder the thin wires to the copper tape. This copper tape is adhesive and you just have to pull the backing off. And we'll put a little bit down and then bend the thin wires over. Use your soldering iron and just a little bit of solder. Heat up both the wires and the copper tape and then touch some solder to attach the wires to the copper tape. Then carefully wrap the wire tape around to protect them again, because they're so very delicate, and then use wire cutters to cut the copper tape short. Now that we have these wires protected, it's time to work on this larger thick wire. It's covered with that phosphor that glows, but to solder to it, we need to remove the phosphor. To do that, you can use a pair of old scissors or a razor blade. Just gently scrape at the wire, and eventually you'll see the white phosphor come off and the silver wire appear. Now we're going to tin the wire. This covers the wire with solder, which makes it easier to connect to later. It also burns away whatever phosphor is left. Now we're going to solder this connector that will connect to the inverter to the end of the EL wire. The first step is to pull the two wires apart, about an inch or an inch and a half. Then cut one wire about half a centimeter shorter than the other. The reason we cut the wire unevenly is so that they match the positions of this wire. We're going to solder here and here. This way it lines up. Pull it apart and slide the heat shrink onto the shorter piece. Make sure you have a little bit of spacing here. Now we're gonna connect this short wire to the inner core. Hold it by the heat shrink to make sure that the heat shrink doesn't slide down. Then use the soldering iron to heat the solder that's already on that core from when you tinned it. Now we're going to heat shrink the inner wire. 
pull that piece over so it protects the inner wire and the solder joint you just made and just gently heat the heat shrink until you see it shrink down. Now we're gonna connect the other wire to the copper tape. Start by soldering just a little dab of solder onto the copper tape. Hold the wire up against the copper tape to solder them together. Slide the heat shrink up over the copper tape and the heat shrink joint that you made before to protect both of them. Hey, that's it. You've made your first EL wire joint. You'll need to do this for every single strand of wire in your EL Tron bag. So we're just going to replicate this a couple times and then we'll get to sewing this onto the computer bag. Lay out your strands of EL wire along the chalk lines of your design. We find that masking tape works well to anchor the strands while you stitch them in place. Use a whip stitch and your invisible thread to affix the EL wire strands to the bag. This stitch catches the fabric, then wraps around the EL wire and catches the fabric once more. You can hide your connections by using a small awl and poking a hole in the edge of your bag. Run ribbon cable through this hole to make the connection between a pocket where you'll store the inverter and where the EL wire starts. Finally, you'll want to protect that other end. You can do that simply by cutting a small piece of the little heat shrink and then shrinking it on top. Okay, now we're gonna make a Y connector. This will allow us to power two strips of EL easily using one inverter. You can also do this without connectors, but just by soldering wires together, but this is a slightly more elegant and easier to work with way. We've finished sewing up all the EL and we've pulled the connectors out here. Now we're going to use our Y connector that we made to join the strands together. And then we'll be able to connect this to a single inverter. I'm gonna tuck it into this pocket. And now we're done. We can take it to the premiere.